Good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another ARA Webinar Wednesday program. I'm Jerry DiMaggio, your regular moderator on the monthly program. Today's program is Artificial Intelligence Application of Pavement Crack Detection Using UAV Technology. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter and my colleague, Dr. Brian. O'Brien obtained his BS and MS degree in construction materials. He has his PhD in civil engineering with a focus on asphalt pavements from Iowa University. As you can see, he's got a variety of work experience both in South Korea and more recently with ARA. We're happy to have him. He's got four years of experience in managing and conducting civil engineering research with a specialty in recycled asphalt and material performance and crack detection using artificial intelligence. Brian, I'd like to turn the program now over to you. Yeah, thank you so much for your kind introduction, Betty. And hello, everyone. I'm Brian Byung-Gi, Brian Boon, and I will give a presentation on AI application on payment crack detection using UAV today. So here is the outline of today's, today's presentation. I will talk about introduction of topic and move on the development of payment track analysis algorithm. And this part consists with three sub-modules, the payment extraction and crack detection and the crack quantification module. Then I will be summarize of the, this research at the end of this, today's presentation. Payment condition survey conducted in a vehicle equipped with devices like cameras and sensors and GIS and however this data collection method reproducibility. And it is also known that this method is very, very expensive. And this approach can pose a disruption to a normal traffic flow and could cause a pedestrian safety problem. In addition, a camera mount on a vehicle can only capture a small portion of the payload surface at a time. Thus, two cameras were usually used to cover just one lane. And therefore, it wasn't able to, it wasn't able to capture multi lanes simultaneously which may require the more time for data collection to cover the both lanes. And the image showing in right here is just, just, just for giving the general idea of small coverage of the camera mounted vehicle, but it has nothing to do with the technology that used. To overcome the such limitations, the recent advances in unmanned aerial vehicles, now call it the UAV or drone technologies are considered as an alternative tool for data collection with lower labor and the cost. So the comparison of the traditional data collection versus using the UAV is showing in this table. So the data collecting time and number of labor are significantly reduced by using the UAV for the data collection. Despite the recent advances in UAV applications, there are still some issues with to the payment assessment. First, unlike image captured by cameras mounted on the vehicle, UAV images contain the payment areas of avians and trees and sidewalks. And these surrounding areas might affect the accuracy of the crack detection. And plus, it has been reported that the manual payment distress analysis usually takes years together for completion. So many automated crack detection approaches using artificial intelligence, AI or in deep learning has been proposed for the data analysis. However, still, the AI-based payment crack classification practices focused, focused on determining the crack types and lengths and width, and which are highly dependent on the training data set. As a result, the such 
automated crack detection or classification practices shows very high accuracy, but it may have low generalization, which means the proposed model can show the high performance on the prepared data set, but it may show poor the less performance when the when the different data is used. Additionally, the most proposed crack detection crack classification approaches were limited in categorizing crack based on their types and the severity because of the complex of the crack formation. So the aim of this research is to develop a set of comprehensive automated crack analysis based on combination AI and image image processing using UAV images. So in order to achieve this goal, the following three sequential objectives are for development of payment and the development of the crack detection, crack detection module and the development of a time-based crack quantification and crack rate calculation algorithm. However, it should be noted that this proposed system may not be suitable for big city with high traffic because there is a high possibility that the low surface cannot be captured due to the traffic congestion. Additionally, this system was designed as an alternative method tools that can be used proactively in small counties or cities where it is difficult to use the expensive data collection system due to the limited budget. So a flow chart for each task and their relationships are showing here. So blue arrow in the represent the fat images of each module. The first module, the payment extraction module, receives the UAV images and and it generates the payment extracted image with the same size of the input. And this output fed into the crack detection module. And it produces one channel segmented binary in the crack images. And the output of the, the second module, the, the binary segmented binary image, is used for the crack quantification module. So the tile-based crack quantification module assess the condition by providing the crack the percentages and the crack width. So top left corner is the, just the input image, and the right here, the right bottom image here is the, the final output of the proposed system. And it generates the details, the results with the CSV file format. And before jumping into details of each module, I'd like to give some basic the knowledge for deep learning-based segmentation. So there are three categories of computer vision, the image classification, object detection, and image segmentation. For image classification, you try to classify entire image as one of the classes. For example, is this a dog or not? which can refer to image-wise image -wise labels. And if you have multiple of them in your images, for, for example, here is a cat and dog. And you might want to find their location, and you can try to draw the boundary boxes, specifying the location of each classes. So this is called the object detection and can be referred to the localization of bounding boxes with labels. And now we can go one step further. So if you want to classify each pixel as one of the classes, for here, for example, the, the all the red, red pixels belongs to the dog and the yellow pixel belongs to the cat. The base coding image segmentation is more fine-grained classification where you are exactly specifying each pixel of the object belonging to the corresponding class. And there are three segmentation methods, the semantic segmentation, the instance segmentation, and 
panoptic segmentation, but I'm not going to go details on each segmentation, but for the payment extraction and crack detection task, I used the, seg the semantic segmentation. Again, the segmentation is computer vision that associates a label or category with the every pixel in an image. So here is an example of semantic segmentation with five classes. So let me break down the, how the segmentation model provides the output. The segmentation model creates multiple channels corresponding to the number of classes with each channel representing the probability of pixel belonging to the particular class. So in this class, the five channels will be made, the person and parts and plants and side work and building. And the probability in these channels reflect each channels reflect the model's confidence in assigning each pixel to a specific class. So higher probability generally indicates that the pixel is more likely to belong to the corresponding class. And to generate the final segmented image, is usually called the mask image, the highest probability value from the class corresponding the channel at each pixel position is chosen and stored into one, the final channel output matrix. So as you can see, the left image is the input image and right the matrix is the corresponding mask image with five, with labels with five classes. So now I move on to the, the first module, the payment extraction module. Uh, a full chart of the, of the payment extraction model is showing here. So, but the, the first step of the developing a deep, mo deep learning model is always data preparation. The quality and quantity of your data set is critical for the model accuracy and generalization. The so prepared data set was trained with four different models, and these models were trained with either you know, data augmentation, augmented data, data set or non-augmented data set. And we trained with two different loss functions. So then the performance of trained model was evaluated using four different matrix based on the predictions, the results of the more trained model of test data set and it, its ground truth. Now I will talk a little bit about the architecture of semantic segmentation model. The encoder-decoder architecture is the most widely used model, the CNN model, the convolutional neural network model for the segmentation. And this is how the encoder-decoder architecture looks like. And as you can see, it consists with two parts, the encoder parts and decoder parts. So encoder parts work same with the normal neural network, the convolutional neural network models for the object detection, which contract the size of the image while the depth increases. By doing this, the model better understands what is represents in the image, but it loses the information of where it is represent, present. Because the low level features such as the edges, colors, and texture or simple patterns were captured in earlier layer, while the high level features, the more specified features such as nose, ears, wing of the bird, or very specified pattern can be captured as the data passed to the network. However, as the data pass through the network, we lost spatial information because the size of the data keeps decreasing in order to find to find the specified higher level features. And this process is done by the pooling layer. And you can see here the the green the green the yeah, yeah, green layer is a pooling layer. 
And as you can see, the data is reduced, the size of the data is reduced up to the pooling. And then decoder part recovers the reduced size of data to original input size by upsampling. However, since the spatial information is lost during the encoder process, so it is very difficult to get accurate segmented output only used in upsampling. So in order to overcome this issue and improve the performance of the encoder decoder architecture, the UNET was introduced. The performance of model has been improved a lot by adding the skip connection, by skip connection here on the same layer of encoder to the decoder. So it looks very similar what you know similar with what we just saw in previous slide, but the horizontal connection was added on the same the layer. That's the only the difference between the encoder part, encoder decoder and the unit. And this skip connection concatenates the encoder picture maps with the decoder before the upsampling. And it provides necessary details and spatial information, which helps to improve the training process. And the beauty of the UNAT is relatively simple structure that can be modified as needed. So for this research, encoder part is modified with different CNN models as a backbone. By using different CNN models as the object detection, the whole unit model utilizes the characteristics of each CNN model. So VGD16 and ResNet50 and Inception version 3 and DanceNet169, those four models are very famous and well-established model that has their own unique characteristics. So it is possible to estimate how effective the, these features of each model are in crack detection and payment extraction. The accuracy of deep learning models largely depends on the quality and quantity and the contextual meaning of the data set. However, insufficient of the data set is one of the most common challenges in achieving good results. And so to overcome this issue, the most the data augmentation is is one of the typical the, the widely used techniques for overcome these issues. So data augmentation is process of artificially increasing the amount of the data set by applying a set of affin transformation like a flip, rotation and reordering and etc. So you can see the first low image, you can see the first low image and its corresponding mask image. And here is the augmented image of the low image. And then and here is the mask image of the augmented image. So as a result, another set of the image can be created by using data augmentation. And those images will be, the, will be used for the training. And second training method is selection of the loss function. Simply the loss function is measure of how good prediction model does. And the pixel-wise cross-entropy loss is most widely used loss function for image segmentation. However, it has a potential problem if various classes have unbalanced representation in, in the image. And since the in the payment extraction or crack detection, the background is much more dominant than the object. So the so the cross and loss function gets a very small values and which makes the weights cannot be updated properly during the training. Therefore, two alternative loss functions of dice loss function and focal Tversky loss were used for this research. And the strength of dice loss is its emphasis overlapping. And the focal Tversky loss has 
strengths in handling class imbalance. And those two the loss, loss functions were used, the medical image analysis and computer vision application, and it shows a very good result. And as I said, you know, the, the, I used the four different backbone models and trained with two, the two different methods, the without, with, without data augmentation or with data augmentation with two loss functions. So a total of 16 different, different models were created on the Python environment using TensorFlow and Keras. And TensorFlow is a deep learning library that made by the Google, and Keras is high-level neural network library that provides the Python interface, interface for deep learning neural networks and that learns on top of the TensorFlow. So ID in here, it's a table in the here, ID denotes a combination of backbone and the training method. For example, IAD represent the, the model that used inception model as a backbone and trained with the augmented data set and dice loss. To train the payment extraction module, one publicly accessible UAV image data set and image, another image data set that collected in Johnson County in Iowa were used. So UAV ID is the name of the publicly accessible data and it was modified to avoid the data imbalance problem. So as you can see in here, the low data, some parts of the image contains only few data, only few payments. So low image was cropped to various sides to fit the center of the load. And also the original data set has eight different classes, including the load, cars and tree and buildings and etc. So unnecessary labels accepting load were removed to make the binary segmented image. And another data set was collected from Johnson County in Iowa. And you can see the first low is the collected image and the, the second low is the masked image the, the, that's annotated manually. So combined data set consists of the 26, 23, and 588, and 1163 patches images for training and validation and testing respectively. The predicted results were compared with the ground truth using four statistical indicators that are most widely used, used for semantic segmentation evaluation. The precision uh, we call an F1 score and intersection of union. The precision is measure of how many of positive predictions made are correct, and it is important when the when the focus is on the minimizing false positives. And recall is measure of how many of positive cases the classifier correctly predict, predicted over all the positive cases. And also it is very important when the emphasis is on minimizing false negatives. And F1 score is the harmony means of precision and recall. And it is useful when the, the there is an equal emphasis on both precision and recall. And in a, in a section of union, IOU is the intersection divided by the, the union of the area. In the context of track detection and the payment, payment extraction task, the most, most critical matrix would be the intersection of union. This is because the track detection typically requires precise the localization and accurate delimination of the crack boundaries, which 
length the IOU is uh, the critical evaluation matrix among others. And relationship of the, the two positive and two negative and false positive and false negatives are shown here. And simply the false positive is not the pavement but predicted to the pavement and the false negative predicted the pavement reason as non-pavement. And here is the performance of performance result of the the pavement extraction model models. And overall it shows good results up to eighty eight and ninety six and ninety two and 85% for precision and recall and F1 score and IOU respectively. But the highest F1 score and the IOU were observed from IND model. The model, will, the inception model with non-augmentation data set and the dice losses. Followed by LND and DAF and DND. And the result of top four models were summarized in the right graph here. So it can be postulated that the inception model is more effective in the recognizing texture of the pavement. However, the data augmentation shows lower performance than the without data augmentation, which can be assumed that the data augmentation cannot improve improve the performance of the model for low level features extraction despite the trained data set is increased. And also it should be noted that the there the significant difference in the performance by types of loss function was not observed. And top four model was used to produce the final prediction using UAV IED da test data image, uh, UAV IED data set of test images. So first and second column is input image and its corresponding to ground truth. And the last four the columns are the results, the produced, uh, the prediction results for the top four models. So overall top four models produce good result, but some false positive the, the reason that highlighted in the orange rectangle that the colonized loop of the building as pavement was up, were observed. But as you can see, there have very similar texture and colors between the loop of the building and the pavement, probably made by similar materials like concrete. However, overall IND, the third column model shows the relatively low false negatives and the false positives among models. Similarly, top four models were used to produce the final result using the IUA, IUA data set. And there are some false, the false negatives for the oil mark and false positives for side work, recognize the side work as the payments on some models. However, IND model shows the third color, third low. IND model shows the smallest false negatives and DND model, the, this model shows the smallest of false positives. So it can be concluded that the IND and DND shows the best performance for extracting pavements using UAV images. Now I, I move on to the crack detection module. So crack recognition and detection problem of, from the pavement surface is very classical problem, which has been studied in various approaches. And then the recent advances of the deep learning approaches, it shows better performance under various conditions than the conventional approach of the of image processing. And it is very similar way, you know, similar to the previous task. The prepared data set was trained with four different models and 
same the training method. So I'm not going to go details of this flow chart because it, it is pretty simple same with the previous task. And eight and for the data for the crack detection model, the eight publicly accessible crack data set and one data set using UAV images collected in IUR were used. A total of around 10,000 images were collected. And to generate the mask image data set, a total images were processed to remove the background and noises. So as you can see here, the example, the data set, the first column, and the first column is the image and the corresponding mask, image and corresponding mask. So as you can see here, there are various backgrounds and high quality corresponding mask, crack masks. So it is expected that the model can learn the features of crack and distinguish it from various background conditions by using this comprehensive crack data set. And here is the performance result of the crack detection models. The same, the overall showed good result up to 79 and 75 and 76 and 62 percent for precision and recall and F1 score and IOU respectively. But DNF model, the dense net and non-augmentation and focal Tversky loss function shows the best performance by all evaluation matrix followed by IND and INF and DND models. However, top four model shows very similar the performance indicating that inception model and dense block the dense net model more is, are more effective in recognizing feature of the crack from the background. However, lower performance is shown when the data set data augmentation was used. It is very similar with what we just you know seen in the previous test. So it can be postulated that the data augmentation is not effective in improving the performance of the model when the object has relatively weak features like a cracks and pavement. And it also should be noted that the performance, performance of the crack detection model shows around 10 to 20 percent lower than pavement extraction. This is because the target object, the here is the crack, is weaker than the pavement, which means the features of crack is relatively simple and the background is much, much more dominant than the crack. So percentage of the two positive and reason of intersection, intersection is relatively smaller than compare, smaller than the pavement extraction module. So IOU score is 62.4% as of the best, but it looks not good enough, but still very promising performance level. And the example of prediction results for top four models are showing here. So selected top four model shows very good results in various conditions. As especially the images, the second and third lows shows the, that the model can detect thin these two lows images. Can detect the thin cracks, hairline cracks on very dark background that are very difficult to recognize with naked eye. Then the top four crack detection models were used on collected UAV images from South Dutch Street in Iowa. And here is a, the first column is input image and left are the results of the each model. So the old model shows good result, relatively good result. However, this is a zoomed image of the third and fourth image and there are some the effort, the false negative errors that highlighted in the green circles were observed for the old model. Despite DND model showed the best performance in evaluation matrix, 
But IND model, the third column here, this model shows the best result than others. It provides the lowest false negative errors. So it can be concluded that the IND model, the inception model, it is, is the best well generalized, generalized the model than among other images, other models. So I will to crack quantification module quickly. So inspired by current achievements of deep learning technology in object recognition tasks, many efforts to implement deep learning in classifying crack type has been made. However, most proposed crack classification approaches were limited in categorizing crack based on their types and similarities, which is difficult to adopt for a real situation due to a complex of crack formation. Therefore, this research, a tile-based crack, the payment crack quantification algorithm was proposed by providing crack percentages and crack width regardless the crack types and its severity level. And for this module, there are two, two, two components, the determination of optimum tie size and development of crack width calculation. And here is an example of the crack quantification module output, output of the crack quantification module. And it provides the crack tiles and the crack percentage and then crack width at the end of the process. And the first component of this module is to determine the optimum tire size. The higher tire size produces higher cracking percentage due to the total number of tires is significantly reduced when the tire size increased. However, if the tire size is too small, a crack can be divided into multiple the tires, which affect the result of tire-based crack with calculation later. Since and the tile, the tire size was determined to be eight by eight inches to include the entire width of the crack in the tile. However, it, this number can be changed based on this, the, the image. And since you don't know the matrix per pixel on each image because this, because of the different camera setting and different flying height. The lane marking was used as a reference object to calculate the matrix per pixel and number of pixels equivalent to tile size using the following two equations. In general, it is very difficult to precisely determine the type and length of the width, length and the width of the crack because the multiple cracks, cracks are connected each other. So the tile-based crack width calculation method using the skeleton and edge of the crack is proposed for this research. The skeleton eyes can be referred to thinning process and, they represent, and it represents a group of central pixels of crack segments along with the direction of the crack propagation. And edge represents outer pixel of the crack. So here is the schematic of the crack width calculation method. So the direction, the theta of the current, the current, current skeleton pixel that's highlighted, highlighted in red pixel here. So theta of the current pixel, current skeleton pixel is determined by the straight line between two adjacent skeleton pixels. And the crack width is determined as the deter distance between the both edge pixels perpendicular to perpendicular to upper side and the opposite side. So both summation of two distances will be the the width of the current pixel, the skeleton pixel. The, And to validate the accuracy of proposed crack width calculation method, 
the artificial the crack images were made with various width and uh, directions. Then the crack width calculation module was applied on these images, and here is the result. And in figure, the red pixels in figure represent a distance of upper direction that I just showed in the previous slide, and in green pixels represent a distance of opposite direction. So as you can see the result of the the proposed method, it quite you know good result compared to actual and the result. And then yeah, the output of the proposed model method. To investigate the performance of the proposed tire crack tire-based crack quantification and crack width calculation algorithm and DND model that shows the best performance in pavement extraction and IND model that also showed the best performance in crack detection module were used for pavement extraction and crack detection respectively. And based on the crack width the calculation in each tile, the top 20 and 24 20 to 40 and 40 to 60 and the rest were classified and assigned to the different colors. The graphic representation and summary of the table of the implementation results are showing here. The highlight, the highest crack width in each tiles were stored and then classified them based on the distribution of the crack width. For this uh, for this example, research shows a crack width distribution from 1 to 9.2 pixels, and there are nine tiles in the top 20 range, which correspond to 1.3, 1 1.63% 1 of the total tiles. Then, crack width is calculated based on the multiple line, the matrix per pixel, pixel pixel and the crack width in pixel. So this crack width can be calculated based on this equation. And each tile was classified into four range with the corresponding colors based on the detected maximum crack size of each tile. So for example, top 20 is the range of 7.2 to 9.2 crack width and it's assigned to be red color. So based on the result, the final crack percentage was 27.5, uh, and average crack width was analyzed to 6.69 inches. So in summary, the main objective of this research is to develop the automated crack detection algorithm for analyzing, analyzing drone images. And this this objective is done by developing a payment extraction model module and developing a crack detection module and developing a crack quantification module. The top four models for each task showed good result when the UAV image was implemented. Especially DND and IND model shows the best performance for payment extraction and crack detection respectively. However, data augmentation technique may be useful for the high level features extraction, but may not be good for good when the target object is very simple and weak, like a cracks and pavement for this case. The developed crack analysis system can be used to help the public agencies manage the pavement in systematic and cost effective manners. So thank you for your interest in my presentation today. And now I'd like to turn this back over to Jerry. Thank you, Brian. Excellent job, even with a little technical difficulty. You recovered very nicely. So we'll get into um, questions and answers. We do, we have received several and we invite you to continue to submit them. I'd uh, like to first uh, kind of give you a reminder of what's up and coming in the next few months. So we have monthly webinars. They're always on a Wednesday, obviously. 
And you can register uh, for those webinars based on the address that you see here. Take a look at your emails. If you've been with us before, you'll get a notification, but also look at the website that you have. On November uh, 29th, we'll continue with our theme and pavements to round out 2023. Uh, Dr. Zafo Khan will present an evaluation of pavement performance and condition using numerical simulation. Then on December 20th, calibration, making predictions to match pavement performance by Mr. John Donahue. I want to remind you, all of our presenters uh, are ARA employees at our various offices. We have about approximately 50 offices. We've got many more exciting topics planned for you beginning in 2024, and we continue and will continue to mix topics as we go along in various themes, depending on who's available and what interesting work they have to share with you. Now, we'd like to spend a little bit of time um, and I've got about uh, seven or eight minutes to discuss questions. Uh, first of all, let me indicate as a reminder that Brian has been gracious enough, if we don't get to your question or you haven't been able to formulate a question, he'll uh, is gracious if you send him an email, he'll respond to your email. Please put it in the form of a technical question and not a consulting question. I believe you all understand what we mean by that. So first of all, Brian, the first question is from Barry, and he's referring to your slide seven and asking for a clarification. So uh, let me, in slide seven, you showed the time for a UAV to perform a survey on a runway uh, to be around uh, uh, one half hour. But on a taxiway, that appeared to be showing that it was taking two hours. And Brian is saying, typically a taxiway is half the width of a runway, basically the same lane. So if it's a parallel taxiway, why would it be that much longer? Yeah, first of all, thank you for your question. And yeah, this this table, the 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 data from this table is just give a give a general idea that the conventional data collection is takes much more than UAV. So it is nothing to do with any specific any specific technology and specific the length of the load, the data collection. Okay, um, that makes perfect sense. So hopefully that helps clarify Barry's uh, question. And good pick up, uh, Barry. So the next question is from Lisa, and Lisa would like to know, how do you handle overlapping areas that be, would be captured in UAV images? Yeah, that, that's also a great you know, question because we, I, I consider the overlapping problem at this stage, at the beginning of the, this research. However, uh, for this research, for this experiment, I didn't consider that much on the overlapping problem because I used the cropped image and even I used the, the, the videos and then I crop it the each images from the video, so I just minimize the overlapping the portion as much as I can, so I don't have any problem with the, the overlapping problem. But it also, you know, should be considered as for the future task, future research. So the next question is from Robert, and Robert has a question is how does the height and the flying speed of the UAV drone take, how is that taken into account? Yeah, that's also a good question because um, so basically when I collected a data set, my own data set in Iowa, I, uh, the flying speed was eight meters per second and height was 10 meters above the pavement, but uh, I, I do believe this proposed system can generate the good results as long as the resolution is good enough to analyze the data. So it doesn't really matter the height and the flight speed. Okay, thank you. So uh, next question is from Estra, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. 
And the question is, is this an end-to-end -end system? I'm not sure I know what that means, but if the answer is yes, that it is an end-to-end -end system, then what's the processing time per image? And doesn't it uh, segmentation make it computationally expensive process when compared to bounding boxes? Uh, that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. So Brian, you probably know what that means. I do not. Yeah, that's very good. Very nice question. Yeah, and that's a good point because uh, bounding boxes versus this, this pixel-wise segmentation, yeah, for sure the pixel-wise segmentation is much expensive in terms of computational resources. But I really want to do, you know, get the precise, precise and accurate result. So even if it is a little bit uh, expensive computational research, computational wise, I go, I went with the, this pixel wise segmentation and give, it gives me better results than just using the bounding boxes. And the processing time is around um, two, uh, five to seven seconds per each image to generate to the final output, not only each each module, each and in order to get the fi the final output of the uh, with the C C V file it doesn't take it doesn't more it doesn't take more than five seconds for each image. Okay, thank you. And we could squeeze in just one more question. We got a couple more, but one more question from Aaron and this is how are areas that are covered by cars or street uh, street trees, how are they evaluated? So let me read that again. I stumbled a bit. Forgive me. How can areas that are covered by cars or street trees be evaluated? Yeah, that's a good point because, you know, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning of my presentation, this, this proposed system is more it is not suitable for the big cities with the high traffic because of that problem. Mm -hmm. And and it is more it designs for the small cities or counties with low traffic. But uh, if you if you have a certain portion that covered by the car, the drones can you know when you when you take a videos you can you can find some you can one you know, one frame or two frame some one frame that that has no cover you know no no portion no covered by the car you can easily find the sum of the the images from the video so it doesn't it doesn't make any difference when you're when you consider the cover, the, some portion that covers by the car. Okay, unfortunately we're out of time for Q&A. We've got a couple more minutes left and I want to remind everybody, if we didn't get to your question or if you think of a question subsequent to today's presentation for the next 24 hours, uh, please send Brian, he's been gracious enough, he'll receive your emails uh, if you have technical questions. and. Uh, so uh, on behalf of ARA, I want to thank everybody again for joining. We've got people that have been with us. Uh, as of February 2024, this program will be in existence for a total of five years. So today's presentation is being recorded, as most, if not all of ours, are recorded. A link will be made available on ARA Webinar Wednesday site next week, and that's where you can also link to previous sessions if you missed those. We'll also be sending a PDA certificate to all participants. Remember again, we've got to confirm that you participated in the entire program, the one hour program. That's not our rule, but that's required by continuing education certification. And then also several have asked about a copy of today's presentation. A PDF version of the slides will be made available. Please allow three weeks for you to receive your certificate and also access to today's presentation in the PDF form. The ARA, Applied Research Associates, is a terrific company. I'm probably approaching my 10th year anniversary. We're always looking for great people 
who like to work on science and engineering for fun and profit. And you can read the bullets here regarding our core values. We live them and act on them every single day. If you're interested in employment opportunities currently, specifically in ARA's transportation and infrastructure sector, which is one of our five or six, depending on your count and business sectors, send a brief resume and your detailed contact information at the link that you see here, www.joinaara at ara.com. I want to thank you again for everything that you did today. Brian, you did a terrific job. And remember, everyone, tune us in next month when you hear Dr. Khan Zampel will be talking about paper performance and condition using numerical simulation. Remember, Thanksgiving is early this year, so that 29th date of November won't conflict with your Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you all. Have a blessed day.